Uh, good morning to everyone present here. My name is Dr. Kunzel Gala, and I shall be presenting my poster titled uh, Optic Chiasmal Prolapse in uh, Primary MT Cella Syndrome. So our patient was a 26-year-old female who presented with persistent headache for six months. There was no history of nausea, vomiting, postural variations, or tinnitus, or any transient visual obscurations. She did have complaints of menstrual irregularities and infertility for which she was on treatment. Her BMI was 26 kilogram per meter square. She had already been evaluated elsewhere for headache. She was advised to undergo an MRI and she was given a differential diagnosis of a demyelinating disorder or an atypical low-grade optic nerve glioma. She was then referred to us. On our examination, we found that her vision, color vision, pupil reaction, anterior segment, posterior segment were all normal. However, on analyzing her visual fields by HFA 30-2, we found a bilateral enlargement of the blind spot along with a bilateral constriction of the superior fields in both the eyes. So we then sent an MRI for a re-evaluation. Our neuroradiologist reported it as a T2 hyperintense kinked optic chiasma with an intracellular herniation. She was diagnosed as a case of optic chiasmal herniation due to primary MT cellar syndrome. She was advised weight loss under the care of a neurosurgeon and an endocrinologist. She was asked to follow up with visual fields and after one month her left eye visual field did show significant improvement. So discussion, what is MT cellar syndrome? It is a condition characterized by uh, shrinkage of the pituitary. It is a condition in which the pituitary gland shrinks and hence the cella tersica gets filled with CSF. So this can be primary MT cellar syndrome in which there is an anatomical defect in diaphragma cellae along with a raised intracranial pressure which leads to the filling up of the cella tersica with CSF or it can, it can be a secondary MT cellar syndrome which is seen after medical, surgical or radiation therapy of pituitary or other cellar lesions which can happen because of an enlarged cella due to a pituitary pathology itself or because of erosion of the diaphragma cellae following radiation therapy. Patients of primary MT cellar syndrome are typically obese females who present with headache, visual disturbances, neurological symptoms. Most commonly, one of the associations which has been seen is idiopathic intracranial hypertension. In fact, 8 to 15 percent of the patients of primary MT cellar syndrome can progress to IIH. Menstrual irregularities, endocrinological abnormalities are also pretty common. Talking about chiasmal prolapse or chiasmal herniation in a case of MT cellar syndrome can cause mechanical tethering, kinking of the chiasma or can cause an ischemic insult which can lead to visual field losses. Now this more often than not can be managed conservatively but in case of persistent visual field defects will require a surgical management in, in the form of chiasmopexy. So why this case? In our literature review, we found that more often or not, chiasmal herniation has always been associated with secondary MT cellar syndrome. We could just find one other case report like ours which had an optic chiasmal herniation with a, in a case of primary MT cellar syndrome. So two take home messages. First is that MT cellar syndromes can present with visual field defects due to an underlying optic chiasmal herniation. And second, a clinical radiological correlation is extremely vital. The patient came to us with a diagnosis as grave as a glioma, but what she needed was just a conservative management and weight loss. Thank you. In case of a empty cell, okay, that's what is the evaluation process? I'm asking about your evaluation process. Suppose you're showing perimetry. The yes. ideal is that you can do the parameters so we can judge. The other people can judge or judge can think is it real or not. That means it is a um, uh, reliable <coughs> or not reliable field. Can you tell me the criteria for a re reliable field? Or, uh, the we sh we'll be checking for the false positive, false negative, and we'll be checking for the fixation losses. Yes. So fixation losses, anything less than 20% can be considered. And the size and what are the, everything should be reflected yes. once you can That's present it one. Okay, it's okay, fine. <coughs> yes. And next, suppose that in such your patient, patient is little, uh, is unable to cooperate with a 
perimetry. Is there any other method to assess the disc? Sir, uh, it, it Apart might Apart from your clinical assessment, any other investigation which may help you, guide you, or documentation point of view? Sir, investigation. Yes. Uh, so we can do an OCT, RMS cell to find out if there OCT is any OCT is one. Clinically, sir, confrontation. OC OCT is in invasive in some patients, obese patient. There may be a diabetic, may be a CKD patient, mm -hmm. early CKD in such cases that uh, sometimes it is a FFA, etc. difficult. So in, in FFA also not indicated or some there is yes. a contraindication in such cases, which is the OCT RMSL can be done. Yes, yes, OCT RMSL. Thank you. So it's a nice case. Thank you, ma'am. You know, because uh, I have seen so many cases with primary M2 cell lab, it can be a co-association co in uh, IIH. Yes. But with the plasma prolapse, where is there? Yes. Good case. Yes, sir. Just a small comment. You know, yes, see, sir. when you put the field, you know, yes, put sir. it the other way around when you are making a presentation. So just go back and see your presentation, yes, put it that way. Yes. 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 So the yes. it should be that way, the right and the right yes. thing. Yes, we'll put it. Thank you. I just want to ask you So because uh, she had complaints of headache and her MRI had significant findings. So you did MRI first and So she had already been evaluated elsewhere. She already had MRI films, but uh, the MRI findings and what we were seeing clinically, even her confrontation clinically was normal. So we were just trying to find out if we can, uh, if there is something in the visual piece because 30-2 would help us get a more clearer pr picture. How did you corroborate the superior arcuate Sir, uh, because there was a chiasmal herniation, so inferior chiasma usually has the superior fibers. So uh, that's how we assume that because it is the inferior chiasma which is herniating, so the superior and superior temporal uh, correlates it with the. It was homonymous? Or yes, sir. It was homonymous. Yes. So usually chiasmal prolapse there will be the posterior fibers. Yes, sir. So. Uh, Cella is dumb. Yes, sir. So if there's a compression, then yes, but if there's a kinking, the reports say that it can present with a variety of uh, visual field defects depending on what exactly gets compressed. Okay.